Today we're going to be taking a look at FX Floorboard for Boss Katana Mark II. It's an alternative to Boss Tone Studio and it has some really great features and it has some stuff that just doesn't work. So we're going to go over the good and bad of this whole thing. And first let me explain, let me fire it up here. Let me, of course it's going to open on the wrong screen That's because that's just how things work with me when I'm trying to record something. So it's not a problem. I'll just move it over here and bam, we are golden again. So you should be able to see all of that. And the FX Floorboard is open source software, meaning the source code is available for anyone that wants to use it, build upon it, uh, use a portion of it. It's easy to download and install. And if you're already using Boss Tone Studio, and connecting without any problems with your katana, then you shouldn't have any problems connecting to this. Now, before I get into this and start talking about the bad stuff, understand that I can appreciate the time and effort that has been put into creating this. As an IT tech, I had to do a little basic coding in college, and let me tell you, it is aggravating, and I honestly don't want to ever to do it again except maybe some simple script coding, but anyway. So I really do appreciate it, but at the same time, I can still have an opinion on some things, even though I couldn't do it any better or or do it at all. So let's get right into the good thing. Let's take a look at this thing over here. I'm going to be looking over here. I know it's the wrong way. Maybe I should, maybe I should turn that over there. Yeah, that, we can do that. That'll be fine. So let's take a look at it. It's got everything set up as pedals over here across the top. You have your pedal effects. That's for your uh, your waz and whatnot. But you have your boosters, mods, preamp. And you can simply click on these to access the controls and choose whichever ones you want. Or you can double click on the pedal itself and it'll open it up as well. And it has all the same parameters as the Tone Studio. Even over here, you can go green. You can change the, the green, red, and yellow button to whatever you want. And like I said, same thing all the way across the board. Now, it's always nice to have an alternative to Tone Studio. I like the mobile alternatives, and that's Katana Librarian, although there are a couple other mobile alternatives to that. To that. So, yeah. It's always nice to have an alternative, especially a free one, available for your computer. And this is available on PC, Mac, and Linux. So that's really great, especially for those people who just like Linux. I've tried it. Not my cup of tea. One of the first good things I'm going to talk about is sort of like the Katana Librarian, you have sneaky amps. Now, over here, um, this is where your amp is. It, up, up here it says preamp. So you have your amp up here. I don't know why they made it look like a pedal. I think it would have looked cooler if they did like a little half stack looking Marshall thing here. That would have looked cool. But you can either drop down in this menu and you see you have all these amp alternatives aside from the normal four and the four variations. Or you can just come up here to preamp and you have them here as well. And, of course, you got your bass, your middle, your treble, and your presence, your gain, and your volume all right there. Plus, you have your solo. You can turn that on or off here. And then your solo EQ, just like Boss Katana. This has everything that the Boss Katana has except the cool library. So, yeah, that's the amp. That's one of the best things about it is you got more amp options that you can choose from. And I tried using this a while back, and it wasn't. It didn't look like this. It looked like a, a more pixelated. Even this one has a little, you know, some pixelation going on. But the older one was even worse, and I didn't care for it. And I came back to it this summer to try it out, and it's been sitting on my computer since. And I'm just getting around to really exploring it because I like Boss Tone Studio. But this version is a little bit more user-friendly, and the pedals look a lot better than the other one. And the other one wasn't as high-resolution friendly either as far as making it fit on a wide screen. So I really like that. Now, what I also like about this is the effects chain is highly customizable. You see you have your regular 7 here, 
But at any time, you can move stuff around. What, is it, what did it say? Oh, to say, it says to save custom. Yeah, you have to save custom. You have to save it. And it'll just only be saved in the patch that you did. So maybe, maybe not. I might be wrong about that. Let's let's pop down here. Oh, let's go back up here. No, it's all it's all different. Okay, back on track here. So yeah, you can customize your effects chain just by dragging and dropping these pedals around. So that's that's another one of the big cons, and the parametric EQ. Let's find the parametric EQ. So, okay, so if you want to come up here to the EQ or the EQ here, this is what the parametric EQ looks like. And I like the visuals here. That's really cool how you can see the, the, the curve of the EQ just by turning the knobs. And it would probably help in comparing the EQ if you're trying to match a tone. So I like that option there. That is really cool. And your regular EQ is just, you know, your graphic equalizer. It's, you know. But this one, it's the same. It's still 0.5 marks. So you can't really, like, try to super fine-tune it if you wanted to. One of the other good things is all your channels are up on the left corner. I like that. That's They're, they're easy to choose from. You can switch in and out of them. Fairly easy. And then you got this loader. I'll talk about that in a minute. Up in the top left in the file section and all along your, your things up here. Oh, I'm not even pointing to the right one. <laughs> I'm using OBX and I'm like, wow, there wasn't that many there before. You can't see what I'm doing, but there's also other. Men up in the menu up the top here in your help section, you have the Katana Mark II FX floorboard help. If you click that, it's going to open a web page and you'll be able to see some directions on it. So we'll close that out. Also, if you go up here, and you can hit the README file. It talks about all the different fixes that have been going on and that tens of thousands of hours have been going into this over the last 15 years or so of building this the FX floorboard. And I think it's been uh, used for other platforms as well, not just the Boss Katana. I'm not 100% sure. But Colin Wilcox is the person that... I guess let's put this together, has coded all this, and more power to him because I wouldn't ever want to do it. But you get, if you get this, you got to check that out. You can donate if you really appreciate the software. Um, the FX Floorboard web page, it takes you to the SourceForge uh, web page where you can download whichever install you need. Also up in the top here, you got preferences, tools, get patches from various sites, Let's see which sites it recommends. Okay, it opened about four or five different sites here. Marty Music, Marty Music, uh, in case you don't know who Marty Music is, he's got a lot of great uh, tutorials on YouTube on how to play various songs. He doesn't always play them exactly how they're supposed to be played, but he plays them where you can understand them and you can follow along. So I'll just say that. And then you got, let's see, Roland. Uh, it looks like a pot, uh, Patch Collection from Brett Kingman. And then GuitarPatches.com, a great resource. And then you also have the Tone Zone, the Tone Central. You can download some of these. You can't download all of these now. You can only download the ones for Mark II. And like I said, some of them, when you start looking at them, you can't. Okay. These ones you can. But if you go into like Tone Studio elsewhere, you might find a bunch that you can't. So that's those. And there's a Boss Katana Amps face group page. I'm not going to open that right now. Yeah, well, why not? But there's other Boss Katana Facebook pages too that you can find patches on. And that's it for now. But there's Boss Tone Zone. Um, that says Tone Central. But there's also Tone Zone. Let's see if I can find that right now.
anyway, I'm wasting too much time on that. Let's close this and let's get back to it. Now, where was I? Uh, like I said, there's pretty good help stuff and patches. I don't know what I wrote there. Patches save fine to Katana. Oh, yeah. Okay, it, let's say you made a patch and you want to write it. You can easily write it to the Katana by using this right sync spot. And you figure out where you want it. Or you can save it to the loader. I'll talk about the loader in a minute. There's a bunch of different ways. It's not too much different than Tone Studio. I mean, it looks way different. But as far as like saving patches to the amp, it's not much different. Now, the next part here, uh, I was going into a bad part of it as I was going across these up here. And then I got to a sign, and I saw this. And I was like, holy crap. That is a lot going on right there. That is very busy, and I didn't like it at all. But then I actually clicked on the expression pedals up here, and I'm like, oh, okay. Now it makes sense. Now it's a lot more cleaner of what I can do and what I need to do. And, yeah, it makes it a lot easier. Actually, I think it might even make it easier than Boss Tone Studio assigning those pedals what you need. Yes. Now, the patch text summary. This is one really cool thing I like here now. If you go up to file, let's say I'm on, that's an ACDC patch, and I just named it like I'm dyslexic. But let's go to this metal, over the mountain, empty, over the MT2 patch. Let's say I want to export all the settings on that without having to look at all these settings. You go to file, I'm sorry, you go to tool, patch text summary and it'll give you a text summary of all the patches all the settings everything now you can even do that with the global settings you can do the global settings too and it'll show you all the different global settings of your amp that are built in right now and set up so that's some pretty cool stuff you can print it or you can save it so that goes over the good parts. I didn't want to make this video too long, but it's already 12 minutes into it, and we've got past the good stuff. Now let's get into the not-so-good stuff. The bad. Save patches. The app comes with a bunch of save patches right up here. This is where you want to save all your own files if you, are, if you already have them somewhere else. So it comes with a bunch already. And if you go to your C drive... Program Files x86, and then Katana Mark II Floorboard FX. This is where they are in the Save Patches folder right here. They come with all this stuff. Now, if you want to save your own patches to this folder, click and drag and drop them right into that folder, and they'll come up next time you start your FX Floorboard. But, problem is, okay... There's some permissions on those folders that you're going to have to change. I'll get back to that in just a minute. So we're going to minimize that. Now, as you can see over here, I'm on the over the MT2. And let's say I want to load a patch. L let me find something that's like multiple patches in a live set. Because, you know, when you save stuff on the Boss Tone Studio, it always saves it as, even if it's one or eight patches in that, it always saves it as a live set. So let's say I've got um, three dumbbells, because this is obviously, or four good patches. Let's say four good patches. Let's see what this is. So I click it, and then it gives me the option, okay, I need to select which patch I want to use. So it drops down, and I put JG Clean, and that's what I'm going to use. Now, if I have something in here, let me find something that I know is a single patch. Oh, I went past it. Where is it at? Cinderella. So this Cinderella patch, if I click on that, it does not load it. But if I go back to it and right click on it, then it loads it. So it doesn't like to so load single patches. So that can be a big pain. And also you can save these patches. You can save patches to the loader over here. And that whole loader is wonky in itself and you can load it you can load a patch file or you can simply open a patch load bundler so you click that and it automatically goes to here so this is one I saved earlier and this is another one I saved now by default 
if I added a uh, a tone to that and tried to save it, it told me I didn't have permission, which my account is administrator on here, and it should anyway. But I had to go into permissions and security and change that so I could read, write, execute, give them the full control. So over here, you're going to select one, and it'll load all those. It didn't even load it right. There we go. That's different. So it'll automatically load the last one you save. But, like I said, you need permission. Now, let's say we got this Cinderella one here, and we want to write it to the loader. This is where I'm going to grab a guitar, because I want to show you how wonky this thing can be. There we go. So, we had Cinderella. I don't even know if that's the way it's supposed to sound. It's a muff fuzz. Let's see if I can turn the volume up on the amp itself, preamp. It doesn't even sound like it's doing anything. Let's see if I can find another one. Let's see, clean fuzz. Would that load it? There we go. There's a there's a single one. So we got a little sound going on there. Now, I want to write this to the loader. So I'm going to hit right sync, and I'm going to go down to loader empty, and I'm going to add to loader. So now it's over there. You see it's added to loader. Let me... Come on now. I selected the just shred one. But every time I try to add one that I've added to it, or I try to load one that I've added to it, it doesn't. As you can see, I'm clicking on stuff. Rashy. Woodstock. I don't even know what the hell that is. And then let's go back to Mamakin. That's a, like a rock patch I, I, you know, wrote off of the Aerosmith song Mamakin. So, see, it took me. It's not even saying Mamakin up here where it should, but instead. It's running off the panel. So I don't know why the loader just doesn't want to load stuff. And it kind of sucks. Another bad thing, I wish it had just a regular librarian like Tone Studio does, but it doesn't. It's just you got this loader thing. And I like the Tone Studio librarian because you got your live sets and it'll show you all the patches within that live set. And you don't have to fiddle with it. You don't have to guess. You can, you can, it's all there. You can scroll through it. You can figure out what you want. You can drag and drop it over here. You can edit it if you need to and then write it. And it's just, it's a lot easier to me. So I just don't, I just don't like that it doesn't have that librarian option, which probably would have been a, a pain to code. So the loader is just all sorts of wonky in itself. I don't even, I, I can't figure it out why it's not. Nothing's, every time you like try to add something to it, it just doesn't work like it's supposed to. So if I, if I go up here to Mamakin, you can see I've got a set tomb, screamer, compressor, tr a tremolo. You go down here, it's, it's distortion. It's different every time. So I don't know what the hell's going on with that thing. It's crazy. Uh, another bad thing, the settings. And let me show you this. You go to settings, you go to preferences. You got your general preferences, save patch folder. If you want to browse, I, I put one on my desktop here called um, FX patches. So I'm going to select that folder. And then I'm going to hit OK. But wait, I'm not going to hit OK just yet. I'm going to go show you a couple other settings because 
The settings don't save whatsoever. Nothing saves. So here's some MIDI settings you can do. You can set your language, your window. You can disable all that stuff. I'm not going to mess with it because it's not going to save anyway. But then I'm going to show you. I'm going to go light. I'm going to go to system. Or I'm going to go green. And I'm going to go light mode. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change it to French. And I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to say preferences save have been saved and it's going to restart. So it's restarting on the wrong screen. But it's restarting. There you go. It's restarted. And here we are. And guess what? Nothing has changed. It's not in French. Nothing's in French. Nothing is green. So what's changed? Nothing. I, I don't know. So that's like just useless. It's useless to me. You can't change preferences. Now... Next thing, I've I, you know, it restarts the app. I've even tried restarting my computer thinking, oh, maybe it means it has to restart the computer. Restarted the computer, same thing, nothing. So I don't know what's up with that. Next thing I don't really care for or I can't figure out is down here you got patch clipboard. I don't understand the point of this because let's say I'm Okay, folks, so as I was editing this video, I noticed something within the EQs. That all made sense with the copy and paste board over here. Now, if you go up to, let's say, this one, and I've copied that patch there. And in this one, I've got an EQ1 and EQ2. Now, if I go back over to, let's say, uh, in the panel, and I've got EQ1 or e even EQ2. I've got EQ1, and I'm going to paste... This has right here, it says clipboard, paste one, bam. It copied everything from the other one, okay? So I'm going to go over here, I'm going to go to EQ2, which is set a parametric EQ, and I'm going to paste that one too. And that pasted the EQ settings from the other patch onto what I'm working on right now. So I suppose that's kind of a cool feature. I don't know if it works with the boosts. And setting the one now. Let's let's find out. Let's go to. Um, I got the boost set at metal zone on that one. Uh, possibly, but let's say over the MT is going to be metal zone. So let's look at the boost settings: fifty, ten, and fifty and fifty. Now, what if I? I changed it. Okay, so you can do. That makes perfect sense. That's actually really cool. Now, if you got some settings within a patch and you want to copy them to other patches or create a new patch with some of those based on it, you can copy those down on the clipboard here by hitting patch copy. And then when you're working on another patch, if you want to say, okay, I would like uh, the mod settings that I have from this patch on this patch. It's already there. You just hit paste patch or up top here where it says let's say mod there's no mod on that one but if there was uh okay is there any mod on snarly let's see okay so snarly had a phaser i don't recall having a four stage phaser on that may be just what it's set at but it may not be turned up or turned on so that's what that one's set at. So that, that's actually a pretty cool feature. I now see the point, and I retract everything I just said. Lastly, the only other con I can see is the look of the interface. It just looks very very early 2000s-ish. Uh, I thought Boss did great when they updated the Tone Studio from Mark One to Mark II and made it look more modern. But this feels like it's a step backwards. I like the pedal look, but it's... Overall, it just looks kind of dated. It's very colorful. It's um, it's it's pleasing to the eyes, I suppose. But it just it looks it looks like some Windows ME kind of app. I I don't I don't know. But again, it's great having a free alternative uh, to Tone Studio. But there's some issues with it, as you could see. And if this was a paid app and I had time to evaluate it before buying, 
I wouldn't buy it due to the bugs. And regardless, a ton of time and effort has gone in to creating this, and I can appreciate that. I really can, but I'm not trying to be a prick, but I'm allowed to have an opinion just like anybody else. Now, if you want to download it and take a look at it and see if you like it, that's up to you. I'll put the description down. Uh, I'll put the link in the description down below, and you can take a look for yourself. Now, I noticed with PC, Windows, when I tried to launch it, it gave me one of those windows that says uh, Windows it tried protecting your computer. We don't trust this software. Do you trust it? And you have to hit the little thing and make it uh, install anyway. So that's what I did. And it didn't set up any alerts with malware bytes or, or Windows Defender, so it installed just fine. Anyway, that is enough of that. I'll let you guys figure out whether you want to download it and use it or not. That's up to you. And if you do and having the same issues, come back and let me know if you are having the same issues or if you're not having those issues at all. And especially let me know if you're on a different platform, whether it's Linux or Mac, and maybe those ones are working better than what I've got. I don't know. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.